Hi guys, so this past week I was in Knoxville, Tennessee filming some crafting collab videos with the other girls from HGTV Handmade. And this was a big production with four cameras going, one on a crane, a sound guy, all that stuff. But the basic concepts between making DIY videos are still the same, so I thought I would share some tips. Whether you have a huge setup or are alone in a room with a camera. So crafting videos take literally forever to make. I'll quickly run through my process. First I brainstorm the project, then I make a test version of that project, then I outline all of the steps, then I film the DIY part and the beauty shots, and then I edit all of that footage and write the voiceover, and then I film the voiceover and intro and outro, and I edit all of that together. Then I upload it, write the metadata, make a thumbnail, sometimes I edit photos for my blog and also write the blog post. And then finally I publish the video and promote it across all of my social networks. That is a lot of steps. So let's start from the beginning. If you have enough materials, I definitely recommend making a test version of the project before you film it. This helps you run through the steps and figure out what parts you're gonna film, and also make sure that what you're picturing in your head is actually what you're gonna make. Moving on, I like to film my voiceovers after I do the crafting part, rather than doing them before or even while I'm crafting. That way I can make sure that what I'm saying matches up exactly to what I'm showing on camera, and by scripting it out before you record, you can make sure that you're saying the instructions in the most clear and concise way possible, rather than just kind of winging it. When I'm filming the DIY, I like to put my tripod like this, with two legs of the tripod up on the table and then one down on the floor. That way, it's not taking up the entire table, and it's also not too far back from the table where it has to be a really angled shot. At some point, I do want to build a contraption so that the camera can face straight down on the table, but for now this works fine. One thing that I don't do a ton but can definitely be useful for some DIYs is adding graphics over the video. KL does this a lot with her sewing videos and it definitely makes it easier to know where to cut and how far and just things like that. This does take some editing skills, but if you have After Effects I'm sure you can figure it out. So when you're taking beauty shots of the finished project, try to style the object a little bit and set up a nice scene. This is something that I'm still working on too with every video, but there is a big difference in quality between just throwing it on a table versus setting the scene with some nice colors and flowers or whatever you want. And if, no matter how hard you try, it's just not the most interesting shot, you can always dress it up with light stocks. Just don't overdo it. And now, my number one rule of DIY videos Anything can look amazing through a macro lens. I'm gonna put a link below to the macro lens that I use, but seriously, everything looks so good through this lens. Here, let me take an old banana. Through the macro lens, you can see that even an old rotten banana looks so cool. So if you're finishing up your project and it's just not perfect, you can still hide that on camera. I have definitely been guilty of photoshopping out extra hot glue or like scratches or dust from still images. And on video, if a project is just taking forever, just do half of it and then only show that half on camera and it'll look like you finished the whole thing. So when you're editing, I would recommend always putting a couple finished beauty shots at the beginning of the video so that people kind of know what the project looks like and what they're getting themselves into. And always color correct. It is amazing how much a shot just opens up when you brighten it up a little bit, and it's really important for DIY videos for people to actually be able to see what you're doing. So when it comes to really repetitive actions, like if you're painting something a solid color, or if you're cutting out a bunch of shapes, definitely edit it down so you're only showing the most important parts, because nobody wants to watch a 20 minute video that could have easily been 5 minutes. There are tons of ways to do this. You could speed up the video. You could fade from the beginning of the clip to the end. You could divide the screen up into quadrants and then put a different step of the process into each section. Just be sure to watch your own video back, and if you find yourself getting bored, then maybe you should try to trim it down a little bit. So I think those were all of my tips for crafting and DIY videos. Do any of you guys make DIY videos, and do you have any more tips? I would love to hear them in the comments down below. So if you missed my last video, it was an Easter DIY, which you can still use for any type
type of springtime party, you can watch that right here. Or if you're not watching HGTV Handmade, which I don't know why you wouldn't be, but if you're not, you can watch one of my recent videos over there, right here, there, here. Or if you want to see all of my DIY videos from this channel, I'll have a playlist link for you right here, and I'm also going to put all of these links down in the description. So that is it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.